don't even know where to start. Congratulations. First of all, this. thank you guys for coming tonight. Thank this you. means thank so you. much to us. Thank you. Congratulations on this beautiful, timely, wildly entertaining movie. Um, whenever I have people as accomplished as you all are, I actually like to start at the beginning and ask, what was your first job in this business? The first time you felt you could call yourself a producer, Ooh. your first acting gig. Yeah. <laughs> Are we starting on this end with me? Sure, let's go with you. Uh, I was lucky enough to produce a movie called All the Boys Love Mandy Lane when oh, I was like 20 That terrified something. me. Um, and that was my first movie. <laughs> hey. Uh, okay, so the first movie I ever made was a CG animated science fiction movie called Battle for Terra. I had no experience whatsoever, um, and I was just like, this is an awesome script, and I feel like we should, we should just build our, our own animation house, and we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, How'd it go? You know what? <laughs> 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 I didn't realize how long it would take. It was a long journey. We also, along the way, you know, made the decision to do it in 3D, which I also had no experience doing, but I was oh like, my. yeah, this, this is gonna make it even better. <laughs> it's gonna be so awesome. Um, and it turns out that like, it's a, it, you know, we didn't have the budget of, of, of Pixar because everything that I do is in the independent film kind of world. So we really, it was a very scrappy kind of um, undertaking with, with the artists like working overtime and it was kind of a really beautiful experience because everybody worked as- How as do we family. see it? Yeah. It's, I think it's on. I think it's, I'm sure it's on Netflix yeah, or iTunes or, really? or something. Yeah. I was like pretty bummed. I'll when be it tweeting came out that later. Just so everybody knows. <laughs> and it didn't respond, um, you know, at the box office the way that I'd hoped and dreamed as as my first film. But the but the highlight of of it all is that Joss Whedon was was nice enough to email us and say that in his opinion that we had made the smarter avatar, which I was like, oh my wow. god, this is amazing. Oh, You're shit. the only person who's ever seen it, but I'm so excited. <laughs> there you go. So, but yeah. it did make a comeback as the cartoon that Sean is watching in the morning scene. In Black yes, In Black You're kidding. Yeah, it's on the TV. Because you, you knew you could get the rights. you want to see more of that cartoon that Sean is watching, <laughs> go see watch it on See just the face iTunes. of the character as it pans <laughs> to the kitchen. Oh, wow. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Janina, for you? Uh, my first professional acting job was um, a commercial for a <laughs> bank or something. And all I had to do, by the way, I didn't realize this was as racist as I now realize it is. <laughs> it's not, I mean, it's kind of a joke, but you'd be the judge. So I had to, I had a piece of chalk. I was a student. And behind me was a sh fucking huge equation <laughs> that the art director had put there. And I went like this. <laughs> that was my Asian. job. Oh, I, was wow. a, I was hired to be a smart, smart kind of brown, probably Indian person. <laughs> <laughs> Raphael? Which career are you asking about? <laughs> uh, acting, specifically. Acting? Yes. Oh, I don't, I don't know if... Uh, this one. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> and, a lot of, and a lot of YouTube shorts. <laughs> we did a lot, we've done a lot of web shows. There's they a real nice... They didn't pay you very well. They didn't have you guys pay seen, this one didn't well at all. Have you guys seen their Calvin and Hobbes series? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you got the reference in the movie? The, the kind of yeah, Calvin seven Hobbes people got that reference. <laughs> I'm just making sure because uh, I've seen it and I love it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been performing since... I, I mean, I think I, I would more readily identify as a, as a performer. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes that it's taken the form of, of portraying a character, but I've been on stage since... I think the first time that I saw myself as a performer was 13, 14, starting to get in front of audiences like around this size, and that being a regular thing. I was like, oh, this is like what I do now. You know, it'd be other people sort of telling me that, like, oh, you get, you get in front of people and you perform. I was like, I guess that is my job now. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and I think that sort of be, be, my identity was crafted as like I'm a person who writes and then presents that writing, you know, th through th through myself and, my, and other and, and and other actors. Arguably, f however many seasons of deaf poetry was was a job as well. I yeah, yeah, I got <laughs> not paid well. <laughs> yeah, again, <laughs> nobody gets paid well. Yeah. Um, my first, yeah, I guess my first professional acting gig was a. Uh, play at a place called Custom Made Theater Company in San Francisco. It's a little tiny theater company. I was like, I just got back from college and we did a, a Václav Havel play called Temptation. That's a, a, 
it's a, a, a reimagining of, of the Faust story set Jesus, in an how office building. Yeah. I don't know, 22 or something. Uh, yeah, set in an office building. Um, the, the, the best, like, fuck you to the world that Havel did in that play was, like, written in the stage direction is that the whole theater burns down at the end. No. Yeah, and so, like, every company who's ever produced it, which there's probably only two, like, uh, <laughs> had to figure out how to create some... For some reason, ours involved me naked. I don't know why that happened. But it's definitely like a... What my, was this show again? It's called, te- it's it called Temptation. Uh, uh, my mom tells and the story. So this was it a, was called Temptation. Yeah. Uh, but it was like, everyone was in orange jumpsuits. It was super Guantanamo style. It was, you know, San Francisco, man. So we, you know. But uh, it was also, the theater was in, a, was in an office building. They had converted yeah. this little office building. It was like this, I mean... If this, like what we're standing on now was a square, that's how big it was. Like this is how close the audience is to you. And uh, my mom came to see it and she's oh. walking down the stairs and she's behind some like uh, little old ladies who are talking about the, the show. And one of them's like, one of them's like, yeah, just wish I was sitting closer at the end. <laughs> and my mom was like, oh, thank you very much. That was my son. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's amazing. Uh, so here we are um, all this time later with blind spotting. Um, Rafael and David, you guys have known each other since you were teenagers, I believe. When did you first start sig- playing around with this idea that would eventually become blind spotting? Jess? <laughs> Do it. <laughs> so everyone, Jess hates to talk, guys, here. so everyone lean in and listen everyone close. Ask her tons of questions. <laughs> They're all really trying hard to make me speak up. So, okay. Um, so basically, um, you know, uh, as you can tell, because of what I said about the first film that I, that I made, as a producer, I'm, I'm really drawn to like really ambitious, kind of crazy, out of the box I- ideas. And I had this, um, what I thought at the time was, was another crazy idea, which was, is it possible to do a movie that's kind of like a musical, but instead of like when the, char- when the characters are overwhelmed with emotion, instead of bursting out into the song, if they could burst out in- into verse, like what would that be? And, and would that be cool? Um, and so I just sort of did like a deep dive in the internet. And um, at that time, there was an amazing show called HBO Deaf Poetry Jam, and Rafa was a was basically the youngest poet, I think, at that time to be featured. And once I started watching his stuff, I went down a hole, like rabbit hole, watching everything that he ever did. And I was like, I really feel like he's such an amazing storyteller that I'm, I'm sure that there's a way that we can translate what he does into a script if he's crazy enough to go along on this journey with us. So I um, stalked him, uh, <laughs> and I found out later when I met his mom that she was freaked out that I, that I did this. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I sent him an email saying, hey, this is going to sound crazy. Have you ever wanted to write a movie? Would that be cool? And to my surprise, he said yes. Wow. Had anyone ever reached out to you like that before? Not for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, tell us about those. <laughs> Everyone's got DMs now. Uh, uh, no, you know, we, we, uh, Jess and Keith uh, flew up to the Bay, and um, we, we sat at a restaurant that is gone now, because gentrification. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we, we talked about some of our favorite movies and, and stories that compelled us and ways in which this verse language could work. David and I were already working together on other things. We were working on music, and, and I think at the time we were working on a play with a few other writers. And... Um, it was about a year. It was about two years later that we sort of merged these two conversations that were happening in my life, where pretty much everything I was doing artistic was with David, and and we were sort of flipping around all these different kinds of ideas of stories to tell. And when they met, I think we all sort of it's like the missing piece of the puzzle. It was like, okay, well, really, it should be the four of us. Um, and I think Jess and Keith were like, well, what if you two write it and you and you and you start it, and we'll do something about the Bay Area. Um, and again, that was this was around the time of Oscar Grant. Uh, getting killed at Fruitvale Station, and that really stirred up conversation in the town. Um, this is really at the beginning of gentrification I- in Oakland too, and I think we realized these are the these are the pillars that we want to build a, a story around. And then that started years of us driving up and down up and down the coast in Diggs's uh, bucket Honda Civic and uh, <laughs> and my two door Saturn coupe. 
<laughs> and uh, and and trying to learn from them. I mean, we realize now they were very young filmmakers at the time too. Like I remember going to their offices then, and they were finishing Battle for Terra. Yeah. That was many many movies ago. Um, but they were like the big Hollywood producers. Yeah. Like we got to impress them. We were them. constantly trying to impress them. <laughs> So we'd like drive down there and and we'd spend all day working and they'd be like, all right, well, we're going home. You guys like, what do you, you have a place to stay, right? And we'd be like, yes. Of and course we do. We'd go sleep in the car or, <laughs> we'd, like, or we'd be like, yeah, yeah, but can we stay here and work a little bit longer? And then we'd sleep in the office. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, David, you then went off and became like a giant star with this show, Hamilton. Yeah. Um, and eight, I know- <laughs> eight years later. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I remember um, when Diggs just left the door that day, and then eight years later, he was in Hamilton. <laughs> yes. Where are you going? <laughs> Nothing happened between then and... Uh, it's just wandering around. <laughs> it's, it takes a long time to walk to New York. Yeah. <laughs> and meet um, Lynn. <laughs> so if I remember correctly, you, your schedule became very busy, and you only had, is it 20 days to shoot this film? 22. 22, 22 oh, yeah. Oh, well, 22. That's a, that's a cake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those extra two, that's the luxury. That's yeah. the <laughs> walk in the park. Can 38 you, locations. <laughs> how were you able to fit it into your schedule? Did you just go from one set to another? Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, I think you said that you, like, you wrapped something on a Friday, and the next day you were on set for blind spotting, and then as soon as you finished blind spotting, you were off to something else. Yes. So it just ended up working out perfectly that you needed it exactly 22 days. Well, we knew that's what we had. Uh, I, even during, because you we had one Yo, day. Yo, yeah, that's right. I had to the, leave. Yeah. Shit. There was one day that he wasn't shooting, and he had to leave to New York to go perform at I had agreed to do benefit. a fundraiser yeah. for, a, for a school... And that also happened to be the day that the Warriors won their second title, and my girlfriend was singing at the game. So I hope those kids are happy. Because I for sure missed game five of that series to do a fundraiser for New York public school kids. <laughs> Hashtag digs love the kids. <laughs> Janina, I'm curious, how did you come to be aware of this project and what attracted you to the role of Al? Um, I got the script in the normal way. I don't think I was on... What? Shout out Kim at? Harden, right? Yeah, Kim yeah. Harden. Yeah, I don't sh I don't feel like I was like on anyone's in this group's radar. K before Kim that Harden happened, is an so amazing casting you, director. Harden. Yeah, yeah. Here in LA and helped um, us a ton. Yeah, so I got the script and I was immediately... I mean, you can just, t you could just tell this shit is like not regular, you know? Um, <laughs> and then um, I started going down rabbit holes of um, who the director was, Carlos. I'm sure you guys, you guys need to go home and do the exact same thing. Go to, what's his website? Lopez Estrada? Dot com. Just Google Make a Carlos note. Lopez Estrada. Um, yeah. He has like a um, huge body of uh, short form pieces that you can enjoy and love. And, um, so I did that, and then I started looking up these guys, and I was like, oh, shit, they're all multidisciplinary artists, which is exactly what I'm trying to surround myself with at all times. I mean, they're all... Just just saying somebody's a multi-hyphen is not enough. Like, multidisciplinary is the, the sort of the operative word for me, because if you've put in the hours, then you've earned the right to actually be good at the thing instead of just saying that you do it. Um, and that's what these guys are, um, and these guys here as well. So... I was like, how do I get to, what do I have to, how do I? it became like paramount that I could be, that I try to get into this thing. So then I took a meeting with them and I, and I gave them a, like, I wanted to make sure that they were okay with my way into this character, which was really specific. Tell and, them about it. It's good. Oh, and we didn't write so it. Good. So she fixed this character for us. <laughs> well, um, you know, you see Val in this moment where she, you can see that she's made a decision for herself. Um, and uh, so the big question was like, why? And I decided that the, the backstory and the cause of that, that decision was that she was the child of immigrants, um, like I am in real life. Is anyone here an immigrant or a child of immigrants? Yeah, okay, so like, okay, so basically then the, we kind of get, and if you got friends like this, you will understand their damage. Um, <laughs> we have this unsaid understanding that we have to like, we have to uphold, um, the sacrifices that our parents have made for us to be here in this country, and, and we take the gift of being in this country very seriously, even though it's a weird place to be living right now, it's still a pretty damn great place to be. And um, 
that means being staunch in your resolve to put yourself and your own growth first, even if you're in love with somebody um, and you realize that they might hold you back from upholding that, you have to choose yourself. And that's really hard, but you do it. And um, I've done it. it sucks. <laughs> and so that was a conversation that, that was the first conversation we had. And everybody in the room happened to be either an immigrant or the child of immigrants, and it was a very emotional. <laughs> We all start crying. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm really happy to meet you guys. I really want to do your film. Uh, yeah. So that was that was sort of my first meeting, and um, then I met, I read with this guy, and um, braided his hair. No, I didn't know how to braid yet. I actually didn't know how to braid, so it was a lot of like, I think you got a head massage. That's why I got this job, y'all. It's because I give a good head massage. Let's just be honest. It was um, good. But- <laughs> But no, we, she, Janina, um, that, so, you know, what we, one of the things we were trying to do was in, in telling the story of a changing city, we wanted to get as many different and specific perspectives on it as possible via all the characters in the film, even though we're spending most of our time with Miles and Colin. And Val's was, was inherently different. We knew that she was sort of, you know, she was going to Soul Cycle. She's pro green juice. So we like know her stance on some of the new things, but. Uh, She's trying to ride in the direction that the horse is already going. Right. And I think that, that specifically um, immigrant first or second generation story is such a unique um, version of progress, right? of, of, of your reaction to progress. And we didn't write that. We, she, she gave that to us, and that, that was so special. We're, we got very, very lucky with a lot of things about this. It takes luck to make movies, but I think particularly with our cast, um, Janina was like, I don't know how we lucked out like that, but but we did. took luck and Kim Harden are amazing. Yeah, and Kim, Kim Harden, Harden seriously. <laughs> Actually, Keith, you think I can't see you, but I see you down there, and I want to ask you. Um, I mean, you guys are covering a lot of ground here. I mean, racial profiling, gentrification, and then this story about friendship and this story about love, and you're doing it in spoken verse. Can you talk about um, you know sort of going out to pitch this to raise money for it, or even to studios? What those conversations were like? Did people get it or? Um, we we made a choice when when we knew we had this window with David to go make it, and we were all committed to making it, to not do that really. Like we we had the ability because we've done a lot of movies, we had the ability to just say we're gonna just do it ourselves, um, and that's what we did. And I think it's because we knew pitching to studios was not gonna work for this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, it's funny because Lionsgate released the movie, and, and I love Lionsgate, and they've done an amazing job with the movie, we did actually, because we had done a few movies with Lionsgate, we did send the script to Lionsgate before we made it, and they said, how are you going to do this? <laughs> and and well, it's we were, really yeah. good, but how are you going to do this? And, so and we're like, well, we're, we're just going to go make it, and yeah, then yeah. you'll see. <laughs> And they did. And, and they did. did. And, they've yeah. been, and they've been like the best partners in the world, so they've, they've been wonderful. But it's, it's from the page, it's hard. it's hard to get what it could be. I'm also curious, I mean, you guys spent so many years working on this film. Uh, what is it like to see it released in 2018 when these issues are more timely than ever? I mean, bittersweet. It's <laughs> nice to have a film that's relevant, but like, it would have been cool if it was a period piece. You know? <laughs> we were like, damn, 2009 sucked. You know? <laughs> uh, but, um, but, you know, I'm, the, the, the conversation keeps evolving, and I think... Um, it, it is. It's. I think it's gratifying to us that um, we. I don't know. I don't. You guys probably knew, but we didn't know. We didn't know this would ever be in movie theaters. We didn't like the journey of this for us ended at making it. Right. We were like, holy shit, we about to get to make this movie. Um, and then you know to have it exist in spaces like this where we can have this like communal experience of watching it. Um, provokes a different kind of conversation, and, I, and I'm, I'm so grateful for that, and I'm grateful for the responses that we've been getting back thus far, where people seem to see themselves and, and their world in it, and, the, and understand that it's really specific about Oakland, but also find their entry points into it being about whatever city they're in that's going through the same thing. So, you know, every time you make a, a piece of art, it's like a, it's a, it's a shot in the dark in terms of connection, but all you can do is sort of try really hard to make the thing that you want to make as honestly and carefully as you can. And we, we spend a long time doing that. Um, and so it's, it's, it's gratifying that people seem to be responding it the same way that, that we did when, when, we, when we watched it the first time, which was like, holy shit, movie's 
some shit going on in there. Yeah. <laughs> it feels it feels real though, you know, and that's that's cool. I I like that that most a lot of people seem to feel like that too. Are you guys like kings in Oakland? Like, I mean, there's so many I am. movies. Yes. <laughs> I am. It's not T'Challa, whatever you might think. It's not. <laughs> Diggs T'Challa. <laughs> It's being represented a lot on screens lately between Black Panther and Sorry to Bother You. And it's, it's a character in this movie. It's, it's a really nice tribute to the city. Yeah, it's a dope place. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, that was one of, the, one of the, the things that we all talked about very early on was that we, we had never seen our version of Oakland on, on the screen before. And, we, and um, so we, we really dove into that. That was the metric by which things would get cut or not from, from the script and, and in the in the edit too. It was like, well, it doesn't really feel like it would happen there, so get it out, you know. Um so yeah, it was and 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 we shot it there and um and it's good, you know. And we've been on the same like making the same press rounds as Boots this week. Like we're on all the same late night yeah. shows and Boots is I used to go see the coup his his band if you don't know the coup you should, uh, that's that's a good history lesson for you um but I used to go see his band all the time when I was a teenager I used to drop in on the poetry classes he used to teach at La Pena in Berkeley like boots you know we've been around each other for a long time um so it's it's really cool seeing this much Oakland out in the world and um and I, I've, I've been saying lately that shooting in a place is a is a particular kind of investment in in the place um you're investing in the thing that is there already right and it's particularly if your film is about um a, a, about showing off the culture that exists there one of the reasons everyone from the bay remembers this moment like about eight years ago new york times puts out this article that lists oakland as like one of the one of the top five places to to visit really? in the country yeah and we were like why and <laughs> And uh, and then we explored further, and everything they listed was some brand new shit that had nothing to do with the city that that we grew up in, and that was sort of this harbinger of doom for everybody from there. Um, and so, what what making a movie that is about the culture that we come from does is it makes the export that culture, and so at least there is some sort of impetus to keep part of it around, right? And that's that's the hope I think for a lot of artists from Oakland who are trying their best to show what we are losing. Um, with with this new influx of people, it's not it's not necessarily about the new things. It's about the paving over of the old things and pretending that it didn't exist anymore. Well, I want to remind everyone. Sure, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> I want to remind everyone this movie is now playing in New York and L.A. Please do spread the word. Uh, it's such a special film. Chicago, wanna... D.C. Yeah, uh, and we'll be continuing to and the Bay. roll out. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for being here. Congratulations on a beautiful movie. And thank you guys for being a great audience. Thank you so Thanks, much, yeah. guys.